Greens and Liberal Democrats voted for it. Um, the, the pension fund does have a responsible investment obligation, so maybe in the course of time they'll be pursuing that, but maybe not. And you'll make your own minds up. You'll see the actions that are being taken, how much progress is happening. And you can make your own up about whether like engagement and stewardship as the chair of pension was, was talking about, is, it, is an appropriate response to the, the genocidal acts that we are seeing on our screens every day. Thank you very much again for coming. It's a lovely tone yesterday. We were quite respectful. We're in this for the long term. We want to bring change for, by changing hearts, minds and votes. Um, it's not always easy. Yeah, and we need to keep going and keep coming back. Thanks again. It's like already as many people here today as there was uh, three months ago. The last pension committee. Really appreciate it. Thank you. For the good work. Thanks, Joe. Okay, in a, in a couple minutes, we're going to have people who are actually members of the pension scheme talking about their attitude to what's happening uh, to their money. But I just want to say a few words about yesterday, first of all. First of all, you can actually watch this because it was uh, televised and the webcast is viewable. And I strongly urge people who weren't here yesterday to take a look at it because uh, there were some brilliant questions and there were also a number of very powerful speakers, including Islam Alashi, who really kind of socked it to them about what's happening to her relatives who are trapped in Rafa right now. It's very worth watching that. Uh, the second thing I want to say is a bit of a comment about what what I think is actually going on with the labor response. They were falling all over themselves to show how seriously they took the humanitarian disaster <laughs> in Gaza. Even though they voted against the green motion, they wanted everybody to believe that they understood how terrible this was and how much they wanted it to end. The one thing they don't want is to take any action themselves. They'd like somebody else to end the situation. They don't want to do something themselves. What they could do themselves is to divest. They have 39.9 million pounds invested in 21 arms companies that are directly or indirectly supplying Israel. Indirectly includes sending components, missiles, bombs that go into the F-35s and the F-16s which are assembled in the US and sent to Israel and are bombing the hell out of Gaza or the tanks, whatever. They also have direct contracts with Israel. I don't want to go into the detail of that because I've already circulated information about that. I want to say something about this question of engagement because the chair of the pensions committee, uh, Councillor McManus, stressed several times about how their preferred policy was engagement. Now the first thing is engagement with whom? How about engagement with us? Here we are, we pay council tax or we are members of the pension scheme, many of the people here. How about engaging with us? How about listening to what we have to say? Well, they're not so interested in that. And her point on that front was, well, there's 149,000 members of the pension scheme, so people like yourselves are a tiny minority and we're not hearing this from all the rest of them. Well, my view of that is kind of mixed. On the one hand, I haven't heard anybody standing up and saying, please invest more in companies that are bombing the hell out of kids and killing them in Gaza. Nobody's saying that. So we're not necessarily in a minority in what we're saying here. However, it's true. In order for this campaign to win, it's going to have to move from the situation we've got here where we've got a couple hundred people to a situation where it's clear that there are tens of thousands of people whose money are tied up in this thing who want it out of the arms firms. And so that is a practical organizing problem facing us. And that's true. And we have to kind of, we have to tackle that through the unions and through all our contacts, through all our campaigning. That's the first thing to say about engagement. The second thing to say about engagement is that they are actually deluding themselves. They think that they can have a meaningful engagement with Lockheed Martin. What kind of a joke is that? 
Lockheed Martin isn't interested in getting engaged to them. Lockheed Martin has a turnover of $66 billion per year. 90% of their work is military. They're not going to listen to representations from a couple of counselors on the world and decide to change their entire economic strategy. It's just bullshit. The same goes for all the other major arms firms that we're talking about here. These are all huge players. This is an abusive relationship. The abuse is that workers' wages are ending up financing the killing of kids in Gaza. Now, you want to get out of an abusive relationship, you get out of it. You don't negotiate your way out, you go. And that's the only real option that they have, and they haven't exercised it yet. And so this whole strategy of engagement is a fantasy, and we have to make that clear to them. The one loophole that she did leave open, the chair, at the very end, was to say that the policy that they're now developing recognizes that there may be situations in which the strategy of engagement and stewardship are not working. Well, if there was ever such a situation, this is it. How much worse does it have to get in Gaza before you recognize that your strategy didn't work? And that's what we need to say to them. Well, three of us put in questions to the pension committee. All the, all the questions were batted back. We're not going to be allowed to put them. But I believe that Tony Norbury has been granted the right to make a statement. I've also asked to make a statement, but I, so far, there's no indication that I'll be able to. So the level of engagement that's going on here is pathetic. However, if we all go into the meeting, maybe things will change. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna start this off with Mike Hogan. I, I, I'm standing here as a, I work for the City of Liverpool College, which is in the, in the scheme. I've been a member of the pension scheme for 40 years, also a council tax player in Liverpool. And as Greg has said, that, that means that I pay in twice to invest in these companies, in these arms companies. And it's really disgusting, even, even somebody who is politically as gay as myself, to see the fact, to see every month, the money that goes into my pension, both from myself and from my employer, and to know that, that part of that money has been invested into the arms companies and into, into the bombing, into companies that are, are providing the weapons that bomb the children of Gaza. Because as far as I'm concerned, the people who provide those weapons are just as guilty as the people who drop those bombs. And the and same as the British government, the US government that provides the money the US government which provides money for Israel to buy these weapons to oppress the Palestinian people is just as guilty as, as, the, uh, as the government of Israel of doing it, despite all the crocodile tears that the, uh, the leaders of Britain and the leaders of, uh, of the US might do, and the crocodile tears from, from the leaders of the Labour Party who sanctioned uh, you know, this nightmare right from, right from the start. But, you know, we need, to, we need to see, not only we as workers with the Merseyside Pension, the major employers are, uh, involved in the Merseyside Pension Scheme are all Labour councils, all of them. So when they try and get away, and we see some of the comments on the vote last night uh, of the council saying, of people who are saying, what's it to do with us? This is miles away. What, you know, what, what is this to do with, uh, with, with anybody? on the Wirral or anybody in Merseyside. Well, I'm an internationalist. I believe that this is all to do with us. I believe in an international uh, you know, struggle for, for a better world. And so it is all to do with us, but it's even more to do with us when we consider that our money and that the investment from Merseyside is going into, uh, is, you know, is, is fueling this, uh, this oppression uh, as far as, uh, you know, uh, in, in Palestine and the, and the massacres in, uh, in Gaza. So it is to do with us. It very definitely is to do, do with us. It's to do with everybody here, every council tax player on Merseyside, everybody who's in the pension fund, uh, it, it's, it's to do with. And the point that, I, that I'd make is that we have no choice at the moment. When they deny us a voice, as, as Greg said, they're not allowing the questions, 
and let's see if we can have a statement. They're not allowing our voice in there. We have no choice about investing in these companies. We have no choice about providing investments in Caterpillar, which, not, which bulldozes the houses of Palestinian people down. We, you know, we, we'd see the BDS uh, uh, campaign. You have a choice whether you go to, to you know, you engage or you buy uh, goods from Israel. You have that, you know, choice whether you walk into that supermarket and, and do that. We have no choice about this. But there is, a strength in, there is a strength in the fact that this is a collective action, that we need to get the trade unions involved in this. Unison have given support. The Regional Council of Unison has given support to this campaign. But I would say it needs to get its act in order, that the branches need to publicise this to the members. I'm trying to do that in, in the Liverpool branch. The branches need to publicise this to the members, tell the members that they can sign the uh, petition to say they don't want their money going in there and then we can shove that in the faces of these of these people who pretend who run our scheme on our behalf they shouldn't be running the scheme the workers should be running the scheme anyway we should be run we should be uh, managing our own pensions and then we would be managing them in an ethical way not in the way that these uh, these people are managing them but that you know but that, that that's the point is that this collective action of workers is extremely important, just as all of the trade union leaders should be getting behind uh, supporting the Palestinian people. And I say that because the really, the only friends of the Palestinian people across the world are the workers and the masses across the world. The elites are not the friends of the Palestinian people. The United Nations, the International Court of Justice might you know, be giving uh, good decisions the international law might say one thing, but international law is ignored by imperialism, by US imperialism, by British imperialism, and especially ignored by Israel, the Zionist state of Israel. We cannot rely on international law. We cannot rely on the decisions of these international bodies. We have to rely on working class action. We have to rely on the action of the masses of the people across the world to do something. This is part of that overall campaign. It's part of the same campaign as we should be going down to the, the armaments factories and saying to the workers there, stop making the bombs, stop making the missiles that are killing children and killing the Palestinian people. And we're saying as part of that campaign, stop giving our money to these companies. Stop it now, uh, because that's what we believe. We do not want to be complicit in the slaughter of the Palestinian people. And without our choice, we are now complicit in that slaughter. And we're here to say, you know, stop that and stop that right now. Thanks very much. We've got an unexpected, wonderful guest here, which is a young man from Palestine. And his friend is going to explain to you what he's going to say. So I'm going to give him the microphone. You can speak in Arabic and then your friend will translate it. Okay? كيف حالكم؟ أنا من فلسطين أهلي عايشين في رفح في غزة وأبوي استشهد بس بديكم تدعوا لي بالرحمة. So he's saying that uh, his family is from Gaza and uh, he's from Rafa. Uh, his dad died in the airstrike, so all he wants for you to say, rest in peace. Thank you. Sure, we will all do that. So let's have a short silence where we pay respect to his father. Thank you very much, and thank you for talking to us. Okay, I'll just pass on a couple of messages before we have the next speaker. First of all, in Manchester, campaigners from Greater Manchester, Friends of Palestine, are doing the same as us. They've tackled the Greater Manchester Pension Fund, uh, and they're trying to do as we are to get them to divest from the arms companies and there's certainly plenty of investments in Manchester. In terms of Unison, just to add to the point that Mike made, uh, the Unison International Committee in the Northwest is supporting this campaign, and branches were notified of this demonstration, 
but also Unison nationally has signed a letter calling on the government to cancel all the export licenses for arms to Israel in the current situation. Now, it would be nice if it happened. I don't expect it will, but it's good at least that they express that view. Okay, next up, the Mersey Travel Bench has been an active supporter of this campaign. I'm going to ask Martin Timpson to just say a few words. Thanks, Greg. Um, my name's uh, Martin Timpson. I'm the International Relations Officer at Unison Mersey Travel and Liverpool City Region Combined Authority Branch. Um, as has been said, um, and like many here today, um, our members uh, have their pensions with this fund and we want a pension fund that we can be proud of and that we can um, invest in um, with a safe uh, and a good conscience and currently we're not able to do that because currently there are funds that are invested in oppression and apartheid and the suffering of the Palestinian people. So we do fully support this Liverpool Friends of Palestine campaign for uh, an ethical uh, Merseyside local government pension scheme that we can all be proud of and that we can all have a good conscience about. Um, it was great to hear um, Greg mention the uh, decision of the, uh, the the position of the International um, C uh, Committee of Unison Northwest in terms of calling for export licences. Uh, to uh, military export licenses to the uh, to the Israeli government to be to be cancelled. Unison's position um, has been clear, you know, throughout um, the horror that we've seen uh, unfold. Um, as a as a as a trade union, we support an immediate ceasefire now. We also support um, the release uh, of all the um, hostages immediately. We call on everyone to comply with international law and we want to see uh, a just peace for the people of Palestine and Israel and I think it's really important that we keep on coming back here, we keep on demonstrating, we keep on lobbying and I think we will win and we'll win for the Palestinian people and, and, and they'll win as well and there'll be a better future for the people of Palestine and Israel. So I'll just finish by saying ceasefire now! Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. Thanks very much, everyone. Solidarity. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. In a moment, I'm going to throw this open and encourage people who want to say something to come forward. But I'd like to ask Alan Gibbons to say a few words first. Thanks, Greg. Uh, my name's Alan Gibbons. I'm the leader of the Liverpool Community Independence Group on Liverpool City Council. There's only three of us, but I think we punch a little bit above our weight. And, uh, I mean, the first thing I should say is it is possible to engage in a dialogue and to pull together people into a coalition to get principled positions through. We started off by drafting a motion on the need for a ceasefire in Gaza. <laughs> And at first we had no support except for the Greens and the small Liberal uh, Party group. Both of them had three councillors each. But because of the pressure by Liverpool Friends of Palestine, week after week, I think it's 18 weeks now, eventually the big party started to buckle. And ultimately it wasn't the, the if you want, the policy that we wanted in the motion. There's a couple of things I disagreed with, but you do have to make compromises. But we did get a position for an immediate ceasefire through Liverpool City Council. Now, that means that I think by moving cogs that move other cogs, by having debates, by putting public pressure, a combination of all these things, we can advance from this position. And we can do it over both issues. Now, when it comes to the position that um, Joe and colleagues have put forward, we absolutely do need to stop the bloody arms trade being paid for out of the pay packets of workers across Merseyside. And as well as Palestine, of course, we had vigils over Yemen recently. The blood piles up. The blood stains the reputation of the Labour movement and our city. And we do have to take a stand. 
I've written to the other four groups on Liverpool City Council asking them to take a principal stand, to engage in a discussion, to try and follow the kind of example that we've seen in Wirral. As yet, I've only had one party reply and that was in the negative. But I mean, we'll keep at it and if Wirral starts to build up a real fuss, a real pressure, it helps us, it helps every group across the country. Because ultimately, I mean, the first time I marched for peace was at the tail end of the Vietnam Solidarity Campaign. 70 this year, I think I was 14 when I did my first political protest. And we've gone through the years with Iraq. We may in the future have Iran. We have had to argue over and over again from the disengagement of pension funds and to support the bloodiest brutalization of humanity. And it's time we actually won. I think for the first time in my lifetime, I've seen a campaign that didn't just meet up maybe every three months over a war, but week after week after week, demonstrations filling ra railway stations, demonstrations every single Sunday through the streets of Liverpool. And it's been an amazing show of solidarity and a political space is opening up beyond the established parties. And it's, I think it's time that we made sure that anti-imperialism and the desire for peace is actually put at the centre of the political discourse of this country. Thank you. Thanks very much, Alan. Um, Rika, would you like to say a few words, at least as a member of the pension scheme? That would be great. Yes, a few, yeah. Anything less than 10,000 will do. Thank you very much, Craig. Um, yeah, I'm a retired beneficiary of Merseyside Local Government Pension Scheme. And I know there's well over 144,000 other people in a similar position to myself covering all the boroughs um, throughout Liverpool City Region or Merseyside as it used to be known. And those that I've spoken to are just so appalled and so um, overwhelmed um, that the money that we've, we've earned um, with our wages has gone into a pension fund which has decided that their best fiduciary duty uh, by the pension fund rules is to put their money in a place where they can just make as much return as possible. And that's just horrendous. It means that there are lives actually being lost. Um, Greg has done a huge amount of work to show just exactly which firms are listed as people um, who receive investments from the pension fund that I've paid into and that well over 144,000 other people have been paying over year after year, year in and out, with whatever that service is to, to our own boroughs and to the people of Merseyside generally wider. And there's no way, no way that we can take any more of this absolutely headstrong and willful complicity in murder of people that we've never met, who live thousands of miles away, who've got every right to enjoy all the um, pleasures of life that we would take for granted, food, shelter, clean water, family life, the right to education, the right to good health provision. And the fact that the people who are in this ward, in this uh, board here, have decided to stand against all of those ordinary human needs is just beyond contempt. And I am absolutely sick of it. Sick to up here. And I'm very, very, very glad that we are carrying on this protest. And like Alan said, that we're not going away. We got a knockdown last night here inside this room um, when there was an unholy alliance between the Tory party and the Labour party um, who together form a minority on this particular local council. Um, so they voted against a resolution which was against genocide. Now put that in your cake and mix it if you can. So I've just about had enough um, and I'm very, very glad to, to see that the protest is going to go on day in and day out until we get a little bit of humanity 
from our rulers right from the top, you know, whether it's the king or the prince or the prime minister or the leader of the opposition, we want them either out or to have a change of heart more in tune with the vast majority, not just of the people in the United Kingdom, but across the world. Yeah. Great. in just under the uh, under the cutoff. That's great. I believe that uh, Steve Fox, is it, of the Democratic Services, would like to explain the procedure inside, and then we'll carry on with our rally until we go in. I think he's coming. Well, while we're waiting for him, I have copies here of the uh, letter that I've written to the chair of the Pensions Committee. Uh, there's probably not enough for everybody, so if you don't want one, don't worry about it. But if you do, come and see me and I'll give it to you. Steve. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name's Steve Fox. I'm Head of Democratic Services here at Wirral. I just wanted to make a couple of announcements in respect to the running of the meeting this evening so, uh, in to enable me to manage your expectations. So the meeting room itself can only accommodate 50 people. And I think a rough check, I've counted about 70 of you myself. So sadly, uh, unless some of you will be leaving before 6 o'clock, we can't accommodate everyone in the meeting room, I'm afraid. But, um, and it will be done on a first come, first serve. So the first 50 people through will get into the meeting room. Hopefully you can sort that out between yourselves. We do have overspill, though, up in the assembly hall, so we've got a TV up there. So if any of you are waiting for friends or family, you can proceed up to the assembly hall and watch the meeting from there. We've got colleagues up there who can look after you. Uh, last thing I'd like to say is, uh, unfortunately, we don't allow banners or flags or placards in the meeting room. We will look after them for you in reception, and you'll be able to pick them up on your way out. Uh, if you have any questions before you go into the meeting, I'll just be stood at the entrance of the town hall. Thanks, Greg. Okay, thanks very much, Steve. Um, I wanted to pick up just one or two points from what Alan said. This is not simply about Gaza, and it is not simply about Israel. It is also about Saudi Arabia, but it's also about <laughs> climate change, because the arms industry contributes something like 5 to 6 percent, it's been estimated, to the global warming uh, overall, uh, the, the overall uh, contribution <laughs> to global warming. So that's very, very significant. Those figures are routinely omitted because the arms industry was omitted from the Kyoto Protocol. So it's only researchers who've been able to discover what's actually going on here. So there are many, many different reasons why the council should be ending their investments in the arms trade. The other thing I wanted to make clear in case anybody here is not aware of it, I know many of you are, is this is not just about the world. Wirral Pensions Committee has the job of managing the Merseyside Pension Fund, so this affects every single local authority throughout Merseyside. All the workers in the pension scheme in Merseyside, anywhere in Merseyside, are under the decision-making process that takes place in the committee that we're going into. So don't think this is just a world issue, it's not. Okay. So the floor is kind of open here. I'd like to prioritize people who are members of the pension scheme. Anybody who has, uh, you know, who is part of the Merseyside Pension Fund, we'd love to hear from you. Anyone? Thanks very much, Greg. Uh, yeah, I'm a mention of the, uh, member of the scheme. I paid into it for 26 years from Sefton Council. And one of my earliest political memories is the National Union of Mine Workers back in Yorkshire, where, in case you haven't guessed, I'm from. One of the first battles they had to take was that they went to court to argue that they did not want the pension fund of mine workers invested in apartheid South Africa. So we've been here before, haven't we? We've been here before. Our money, our pension fund, we pay into it, they invest it in apartheid in South Africa or in Israel. So I absolutely share the anger and I do share the frustration that we have over the fact that this is being done now, allegedly, in our name. I do want to thank uh, Liverpool Friends of Palestine for organising this and I do want to thank World Trade Council for getting people here as well. Because I am going to say this, why are the national unions not organising a better opposition to what is happening inside our pension funds? 
were not bystanders, were not neutrals. All the unions have representatives on the pension funds, and they should be doing more than this. And that leads me on to my second point, which I, you'll be really relieved to hear. There's only two points. Page two, yeah. Cool. Okay. The second one shot again, is uh, I'm part of the uh, Stop the War Coalition, and one of the most um, amazing aspects of this entire campaign is the number of people who are turning up to the demonstrations in London. And make no mistake, every one of those demonstrations has been a slap in the face for the supporters of Israelis. 800,000 people marching through London on Remembrance Day after Suella Bravham had encouraged the far right to turn up and disrupt it, had encouraged the police to arrest people for chanting Palestine will be free. That has pushed them back. Every national demonstration they've tried to shut down, they've tried to close down, they're now trying to criminalise them. The next national demonstration is on the 30th of March in London, which is Easter weekend. There are no train services running into Euston that weekend, so coaches are being organised. Keep in touch with all of us, look on the Stop the War national website, which will give you details of where to get uh, in contact with people who are organising coaches in Liverpool, which people are doing. And please, please, let's all go to London on the 30th of March. Let's make it a million people. And let's keep going. And thank you very much for coming out in support of your pension fund. Thanks, Nigel. Uh, okay, would you like to say something? Tony. Hi, everyone. You're right. Listen, um, there's been some emotional speech, speeches tonight. And I was given uh, the right to make uh, a statement. Mine was originally a question to the chair the Labour Chair of the Pensions Committee, but it's now been turned into a statement. But part of my statement will be to announce and, and to, to listen to the word remember, because that's all we've all got to do, and, that, and it was mentioned before. And there's a, a big wooden statue behind us called the Cenotaph, where people remember on the 11th day of the 11th hour people who died fighting against fascism, fighting against what's going on now in Gaza and Israel. And those people put their lives to say, not in my name. Not in my name will this country or any other country be taken over by fascist dictators. So we will remember them, but those councillors who voted against that motion last night will stand on that cenotaph every single year and they'll remember the people who died, but they won't remember what he died for. And what he died for is exactly what's going on in Gaza at this present time. So I want people to look over, look at them names, because I'm going to speak for them tonight. And we will remember that we'll have our memories. We will remember when the election days come round. We will remember those Labour councillors and those Tories who disgracefully did not vote for a ceasefire motion. What that means is they're quite willing to see innocent people, people who've had nothing to do with taking hostages, people who have had nothing to do with any sort of crime, killed and slaughtered in Palestine by the Israeli military. They're quite happy to see that carry on. Well, they don't deserve our votes, and we will remember that. <laughs> 